Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Another Sunday, another day in the workshop. Should be a good day. And I think um, quite a few people are actually getting out of uh, lockdown. So that's a really good thing. Um, uh, there's a message there from Aussie this morning that uh, he's been paroled. Yoo-hoo! No, I, I think paroled, he's got out of lockdown, which is really good. And um, slowly, slowly, we're getting above this thing, getting over this thing. So anyway, so lots of still lots to do on the box. Um, what we're doing today, if you had a, if, if you've been watching my show and you've been watching the channel, you'll have noticed that I've been doing a couple little uh, midweek shows and those are uploaded they're not actually live but they're uploaded and uh, you can get to see them as um, as you wish and click on them so those things that i do during the middle of the week are just extras that sort of a bit difficult to do during the show so we put put together something during the week just those little things that have to be done and one of the things that we did but though the thing I did last week was um, we built a um, a jig to work on uh, the plinth and to get that curve on the plinth. Now, this is the jig that we built. So that's the jig we built. Got a backboard support. In, in stop and that was nice and square this is for those people who did who didn't see the show and a toggle uh, toggle clamp on there to to, to help uh, hold the material down because it's going to be a long piece of material that goes on here which is the, the plinth piece now the reason we're doing it this way is because the normal way that I do the steps is to use a, a, a spiral bit and the fence on the jig now we can't do that because of the shape that we have so we had to develop something else and the jig was the easiest thing to do. So just shift this out of the way for you. And these are the parts of the plinth that we're going to be working on. So what's going to happen with those is we're going to clamp that in place on there. If I turn it around, you can actually see the shape that I'm going to take out, which is this bit in here. Now, I'm not going to take it out um, all in one go. I'm going to cut the, cut the bit off with the bandsaw to start with. And uh, for the side pieces, I've actually made a second jig, which is a little bit smaller. Now, you might think, gee, there's a lot of jigs to be made. Well, I find that once you make one, you can then uh, use it for lots of other jobs and lots of other things. This one here is specific to this task. And as you can see, exactly the same thing. So we're going to do the, both, both the same. So let's get started on it and, and start getting sorted. I just want to make sure that that's hard up against my stops. So everything's nice and square here. And I'll show you the router bit. So Mark the arc. As somebody said to me the other day, gee, that's a, a fairly simple way of creating an arc. How do you know it's perfect? Well, it, you don't. It, it, it's not something that we're looking to try and get perfection at. We sort of, we, we, our boxes are one-offs. So whatever curve we put on there is going to be specific to our box, right? Now you could go and find yourself, and this is one that I made, a nice big compass and draw yourself a fairly big arc on your piece of timber, but mm, set up is going to be a little bit difficult. So that, that's a fairly rudimentary style of thing that I made many, many, many years ago. It still works today. I can still draw a big circle, particularly when I'm doing some turning. If I'm trying to turn a, a blank on a, um, for a bowl or something like that. That still, still does the job. But for this task, probably not. 
probably the, the, the technique that I used last week was probably a better, a better technique. So I'm going to draw these. Now you need to make sure that we're working on the bottom edge. And I've marked the top of the edge. So the bottom edge is to what we're going to curve. Again, just run the curve in. I'm going to cut the excess off with uh, the bandsaw. So I need to do all four. I've already done this one. And I need to do this one here as well. So there's my pieces. So over to the bandsaw. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so. Ears on everybody. We're just going to cut this. Now, when you're cutting this, make sure that you cut relatively close to the line. I don't want to go right on the line, but I'm going to go relatively close to it. Okay, so there's my four pieces made. As you can see, nice little curve. I marked one of these the other day and I think I have marked it wrong right now. Oh no, we're good. Now all I need to do now is trim these up. I may need to do a little bit of work later down, down the track, a bit of sanding. But I'm going to round over, just get rid of those. I'm going to round over the outside edge of it anyway. So what we need to do now is to trim up the inside of it to the perfect size. So that's the shape that we have there. So this is how we go about it. So I'm just going to fit that onto there. lock it down so it's going to stay in place now as you can see i've got a little bit of material to remove from just along that inside edge there and it'll also tidy up that the saw marks so we'll go ahead with that now the router bit that i'm using i originally started to use the straight bit for our B template cutter. So I originally started that, but the problem with that is that the gap between there and the outside of that bearing is quite 
quite large, which means that I would have had to alter my, my shape along here to actually get it to actually cut on there. But you can purchase from Carby Tool this little beauty, and that is a, flim tr a, a, a flush trim bit. And you can see that the bearing and the teeth on the bear on the on the router bit are almost parallel. There's a very small gap here, which means that I can run along there and cut quite nicely without damaging my um, damaging my um, template. You also notice that the router bit, the teeth are, are actually curved a little bit. Okay, so that gives you a trim, a trim, um, if you can see it's, it's curved that little bit, it's, it's, it's not parallel along the, along the shaft, it's actually twisted a little bit. Okay, so that will give you a bit more of a shearing cut as well. Now, for those of you who haven't got one and want to get one, there's the numbers for them. It's TSH 8224B a half, okay? So um, just copy that down if you're sitting there with a pencil in your hand, and that will, um, that will be the route a bit you can to use. Get, get one from Carby Tool. We don't carry them. Um, so let's... Put that in there. I've put the spring on there. Um, they don't come with the spring. I still think that having the spring on there just gives that little bit of safety thing for the, the sleeve on the bottom. It supports the bearing. And as you can see, it's quite big, so you can we can spend a fair bit of time. We can you can you can use it on a, a fairly thick piece of timber if you're using thick feet for your bases. So now when we cut this, what we're going to do is we're going to cut from here. Okay, so we're going to move along there, and the reason being, we're only going to go to the centre, and then we're going to flip it over and do the other side. And because of the way we've cut our our jig, it'll be identical on both sides. If we start cut, if we cut down here, we're cutting uh, along the grain, okay? So our grain runs along this way here. So we're cutting with the grain when we get there. Once we get past the centre, we're actually cutting against the grain, right? So when you're cutting against the grain, what's, there's no support for the material on the, uh, above it. So therefore, what will happen is you'll get tear out and you may end up damaging the, the top edge of the foot. Okay, so we don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here, we'll come along to about the centre somewhere, and then we'll flip our piece of timber over and we'll start again and go back again. Um, not only will it give us a nice, smooth, clean finish, but it'll also give us equal measurements for the feet on both ends. Now, my measurement from here to here is about 55 millimetres. You don't have to do the same. You can do any sort of measurement you like, but um, set it up the way you want it to be set up. So now we set the bearing so it will run on the jig and the teeth will cut flush on our piece of timber and we'll cut down there. Okay, here's on everybody, here we go. You ready? <laughs> Nice smooth surface, flip over, And there we have the perfect 
little arc on our on our, our piece and I'll just do the other ones so I'll get my second one put that in there is on again <laughs> A little bit of a wobble with the bandsaw there. I'll just have to tidy it up with a bit of sandpaper afterwards. Okay, so that's the that's the two big ones. Okay, so they're there two long ones. And now I'll go to the smaller one. Take that jig away. And this jig is built exactly the same as that. You'll notice that on the jig I've got fairly big platform. The reason for the platform is stability and somewhere to put my hands away from the route a bit. So a very good idea to to make sure safety is a, a consideration when you're building these. Lock that in. And cut this one. Okay, now I went through all of that problem, all of that, all of that work to build those lovely jigs and um, that's all I'm going to use them for. But down the track when we do another, another box or something else that requires that, I've got the jig made there. I can always take the toggle switch off or the toggle clamp off and put it on something else anyway and just mark the jig as to what it's, what it's for. So there's always, uh, there's always that. Let's take this route a bit out of here. Just had a little bit of a little bit of work to do on this one here. Had a bit of a wobble with the bandsaw. Never mind. Get that sorted afterwards. Now assemble. Okay. And this is the thing about when you pull pieces apart and put them all together, you'll notice that I've got a, a cross here and a cross here. Whenever I pull things apart and put them back together, I make sure that I've got them marked so that they will go back exactly the same way.
So now, when you look at that, you can see these nice curves that occur on there and on the long side. And that's quite a simple task to, do, to get those done. It just takes a little bit of time. So my next task now is to cut a rebate around here so that I can fit my box inside. Okay, so that's going to recess into the top of the plinth. Now, I can't do that just at the moment. I can't cut that plinth until such time as I have the base in the bottom of the trench, uh, bottom of the box. So this is my next task, is to put the base in the bottom of the box. So this is how I'm going to go about that. What I've done is I've cut myself a piece of cedar. Now the piece of cedar is exactly the same size as the outside frame of the box. So I'm going to recess that down. It's only, it's only eight, nine millimeters thick. I'm going to recess that down a little bit so it fits into the box. One of the problems that, I, that occurred with, the, the, with the, the previous box, the, the demo box that I'm doing, and I'll just show you that. When you look into the bottom of the box, When you look into the bottom of the box, what you can see is the edge of the the edge of the um, the box where the plinth is actually not covering over the, the the foot. Now, to me, that looks unsightly. To most people, that'd be fine, but to me, it looks a little bit unsightly. So, what I want to do is I want to get rid of that little visual setting in of the, of the base. So this is how I'm going to go about that. I don't, I don't particularly like the look of that. So when we set this in here, I'm going to put a, a rebate. I'm going to put a rebate in the top edge or in, in here. And then I'm going to rebate around my trench and fit the two in there so that it actually fits on the top like that. And when I put the, the, re, when I put the, the plinth on, the plinth is going to cover this surface here because I'm going to re recess that down in there. So the, the plinth itself, when you look into the bottom of the, of the plinth, you're going to see that. Okay, so it's nice and clean. You're also going to see that on the inside of the box. So when I turn the box in, you're going to see a nice clean join between the box and the, the base. So I have to do that. And the outside edge, where you do have the visual uh, joining of the two pieces of timber, is going to be covered by a rebate in here. All right? Now, it sounds very complicated, but it's actually a quite a simple way of doing things. The other thing it does, because I've got little steps and, and rebates all over the place, it gives you much, uh, a much larger gluing surface, and you want that gluing surface for everything to stay put. So having all of that, let's see if we can get it started. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got to attach this to this. So cut, I'm going to cut a rebate into there, I'm going to square up the corners, and then I'm going to cut a rebate on the, um, on the, on the trench, uh, uh, on the base. So four millimetres, and the best tool to do with that is my little um, rebate cutter. Now, if I set that on the top, 
make sure you're doing the bottom. So, where did you get that camera sitting there? Okay, so, bring it down. So it's only going to be a four millimeter rebate. It's not very big. So I'm right on the edge. Okay. Change over to my big bearing. Oh, dropped that one. This is the process process that I do with all of my rebating, particularly with um, trenching. That way I don't get any tear out, and I don't want tear out here. It's going to look very unsightly. Okay. So, around the inside of the box. Set up now. Remember, um, what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to be doing the normal technique that I use all the time, which means I'm going with the rotation of the router bit for the first cut. When I put the other bearing back, the other bearing back on, uh, I'm going to cut it against the rotation of the router bit. Ah, oh, look at that! I just broke my earmuffs. Pammy's got a new set. <laughs> Gee, that doesn't happen very often. Breaks fair in the middle. It's called a fat head. You right with yours? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So as you can see there, I have this really nice little rebate happening around there. A bit furry at the moment, but it'll tidy up. The red ones are good. I've pinched Pammy's earmuffs and now she has to go dig out another pair. <laughs> And they've been hanging around in the cub. And as as per usual, when what happens in the in in the shop is uh, everything gets a little bit of a film of dust on it occasionally. Um, not not in Dave uh, uh, Stanton's shop, but in mine it does. So <laughs> things get a little bit dusty. Fancy breaking a pair of earmuffs. Jeez, they're class five too, so they're supposed to be a good one set. Back to warranty. Okay, now we're going to finish the cut and go all the way around the box. So, ears on everybody. <laughs> And as you can see, I've got this really nice rebate all the way around now. 
Okay, so that's my little step that's going into the bottom of the box. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do match it up with that one there. Before I do that, I just need to tidy up my corners. Okay, I want this corner square. So it's just a matter of out to the square with my pencil. tidy up all of these corners the reason being the reason being that I'm squaring these up is because uh, it, it's too hard to round over just the step that we're going to create on the base to round over the corners so it's better that we get nice square corners these are these aren't going to be seen you're not going to be able to see this 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 cut out so um, you just do it as quick as you can do it do it accurately uh, that way that way you're not fiddling around trying to get things to to fit afterwards I just need a chisel sharp chisel does a wonderful job There yet, so it doesn't take all that long to get those those little bits sorted. You can see the silver ash. It's actually quite 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 nice. If you're a carver, the, the silver ash is actually quite a nice carving chisel because it cuts so cleanly and it's one corner turned up always cut across your grain first so wherever you're cutting across grain if you're cutting along the grain as well do your cross grain first and that way you don't split the timber keep your fingers from fingers behind the blade now that a lot of people who don't do that and they end up with band-aids so, particularly when you've got nice sharp blades I, um, I tend to sort of err on the side of safety it's, uh, it's better to use a sharp blade than it is to use a blunt blade so spend the time learning to sharpen your chisels You'll notice I'm not even using a mallet for this and I'm getting beautifully clean corners. Put this on here. 
I'm going to say cut across the grain first. Looking pretty nice now. If we don't get this fitted today, I'll, I'll, I'll finish it off during the week and I'll post a, uh, a new posting. Dave wants to know, do you ever use a corner chisel? I, I, I looked at them, Dave, um, the, the corner chisels. Um, and... Uh, I don't do it often enough to warrant the necessity to buy one. But seeing as how I'm spending your time fiddling around here, I could probably justify buying one because I probably could have had the job done half the time. <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually have, have a corner chisel. It's sometimes it's just nice to be able to spend a little bit of time quietly cutting. I'm nearly done. Get my fingers away from it. I don't want to cut my fingers in the middle of the show. Blood doesn't look good flowing when you're doing a live show. Bad enough busting a pair of earmuffs. I said Dave Stanley was asking about the muffs. Are the corn chisels? Do you have them in the shop, Dave? Let me know. Okay, so. I have my rebate cut. Now what I need to do is I need to fit here and I need to cut a rebate that will fit into here. So my measurement here, I need to make sure that I've got the correct measurement there and there so that I can sit that inside. Now, the, the inside bit's not actually going to be seen. Um, the inside of this trench is not going to be seen so if you're a half a millimeter out what it will do is it will give you a little bit of movement and you can adjust things and get it get it perfect before um before you glue it together so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take my thickest measurement so if things aren't perfectly square And when we're measuring here, my measurement on here from the inside edge of the trench to the outside of the box is eight millimeters. So I've got eight millimeters to play with there. And when we turn around to the side, and we do it this way, we check here, I've got just a little bit under eight millimeters. So what I can do is make sure my piece of timber is a perfect fit, so it fits perfectly around there, and I can take an eight millimeter cut all the way around the inside of there. Okay, so this is how we're going to do that. And we're going to use another technique that I use when I'm making boxes, and that is using my tenon cutter from our kit. Let's get this out of the way. Now if you look at the tenon cutter, you can see that it's got nice square shoulders on it. So 
to set the height. Move my box back. So to set my height, I have another inches. I have four millimeters or just on four millimeters. Just check along it. Make sure we're all there. You're just on four millimeters. So if I set it three and a half, or maybe a little bit a little bit more than three and a half, that should give me a a really good rebate. So that's set here. Set my height. Come up a little bit. Come on down too far. Is that on four? I want it to sit flush. So if I just drop it underneath that. Mark. Keep popping down too far. It's not working. We'll get there. So I'm just, I'm, all I'm doing is trying to get my measurement correct. I want it accurate. There we go. So now my fence. I should have had this out and ready, but I didn't. depth of my trench. Oh, it was eight millimeters, wasn't it? I had to come in. There's my eight millimeters. Move the clamp. Okay. So what I need to do now, which way was the top? I wrote on this and I can't remember where I wrote. Hmm. There it is. Okay. We're good. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to cut straight along here, out the other side. I'll do both ends first. Need a push block. And I need my earmuffs. These are the unbroken ones, by the way. Yep. Okay. Ears on, everybody. Just testing it. Just got to make sure my measurements are right. That's okay. It's just want to go back a little bit.
The reason I, um, I do the two end parts first is to avoid this. You can see tear out. Now, it's only torn where I've cut. But what I can do is once I cut along here, when I cut along that section there, um, I'll remove any of that tear out that happens. If you do that afterwards, you'll find if you if you do your ends afterwards you find that tear out actually causes a great deal of grief just checking that measurement to make sure that i've got everything right i might actually come back a tiny little bit more for the sides and now we do the along the edges None of this cutout's actually going to be seen because everything will be sitting flush. my rebate so let's try a fit may need to take a little extra off but let's see if it fits to start with oh well, I couldn't have asked for anything better eh? check that out that fitted just perfect and if I turn it over you can see inside you can't see any of the cuts, any of the markings. There's nothing showing in there that shows that it's actually not just glued straight on there. So what will happen is now I've got to sand that till it's perfectly um, smooth on the inside, basically because the bottom of the box, the bottom of the box is really difficult to actually sand. So a lot of sanding will happen to get that to glue into place. So now what I can do once I've got that done. There's 10 minutes left. So what I need to do is mark out on my feet where that's going to go. Okay. Now, as you can see, on the edge of here, we have the visual stuff. That needs to drop down into the trench. Okay, so we need to cut a trench on these to fit that into the bottom of there. Okay, so same technique pretty much, except we're not going to glue it together. We're going to do the parts individually, and we have to do the parts individually because if we try and do it, um, if we try and cut them as a, a one piece object, what we'll find that if we have the slightest little error, it will show up when the sides of the box meet the sides of the, of the plinth. Okay, so the plinth won't actually fit flush or we'll end up with gaps in our dovetails. We don't want that to happen. So we're going to do them all individually and we just have to trial and error, pull it apart, fit it, trial and error and fit it. Okay. Now, if you don't like the idea of, of doing um, a trench or a rebate, you can fit that straight on top of the plinth. And what you'll get is you'll get the colour of the base actually added as a feature in the box. So there's a couple of different things that you can do to get uh, a different result. And that, that looks quite nice, but you probably have to offset it with something that happens either at the join where we cut it in half or uh, 
on the lid itself. So there's a number of different things that you can do and different ways around it. And you can do this stuff as you go along the box, pro your progress along the, the, the construction of the box. So what I want is I want the box to be all one colour. I don't want that showing at the bottom. So I'm going to recess that into my plinth. And part of that is because I've already made the plinth 40 millimetres, which makes my box too big. And it also gives me uh, a very odd look about it. Um, it doesn't look in proportion when you've got the plinth on there and the box just sitting on top of the plinth. Okay, so I need to drop it down a little bit to just to make it a bit more narrow. So that's what's going to happen. So now what we need to do is mark out where we're going to fit the trench in these parts. It'll be exactly the same size as the as the piece of material. Just make sure that we're all set. Now I've cut the plinth so that I've got a five millimeter overlap around the outside there. And it's really good idea to check to see that you have got that right. And once you've got it measured and set up, I cheated a little bit. I've actually got the mark drawn on there. I spent the time for the show just to get it so it was exactly right but I'll show you what I do there so I've got it sitting on the plinth and it's just a matter of now holding it in place and then drawing a line around here so around the other side And I want that to fit inside there. Okay. Now I'm not going to glue that onto there yet because I need to sand this and make sure it's perfectly smooth. And now you can see that's where the plinth is going to, the, the rebate's going to fit. So I have to cut each of these individually. Now I've got the correct router bit in there to do that. So what I need to do now is work a depth. And my depth will be, I'll get my box back. Just shift that out of the way. My depth has to be more than the thickness of that, which is five mil, four, six mil, which I've got there. So I've got to go more than six mil. So a couple of extra mil, say three millimeters more, which makes it 10 millimeters. Okay, so 10 mil uh, depth of cut will give me a really nice bit of support. It will cover over all of this and you won't see a join underneath the box and you won't see a join in the box. All right. But we've got to get the plinth correct straight up. So 10 millimeter depth. So in here, about here. All I'm going to do is, well, I'll mark the end one actually. So my depth of cut is going to be 10 mil. And if you can see 10 mil, if I run a line along there, you can see how close my curve is to my line. So there's lots of material there to support it. Also, I'm going to have a rebate here, which means I'm going to have lots of support for the top edge of the, the, the plinth. And then it, it sort of lowers the whole thing down a little bit smaller and just makes it that little bit neater, a little bit more ac um, delicate, you might say. So, we pull, pull apart. see that there's there's quite a lot of support with the with the dovetails it's it's quite 
bit snug. I'm not pulling it really hard. I don't want to break anything. I've already broken my earmuffs. So once we've got it apart, it's just a matter of Gary Wilco wants to know when we round over the, the base. The pin? Oh, when I round the Gary, usually I'll round the whole thing over once I've got the whole lot assembled. Once I've got the um, the, the whole lot assembled, I know exactly where everything's going to round over. Um, but the first thing is to get everything square. And the reason I get everything square first is because I've got square edges on everything which run up against fences and, um, and, and I run other tools against it and do my measuring against it. So rounding over is generally one of the last things I'll, I'll try to do anyway. So all I'm going to do now is set up this. So I've got a 10 millimeter cut and I'm just going to run that along there at my correct depth. Okay. So I've set the depth. So same route a bit. My tenon cutter. Shift some of this stuff out of the way. Now, one of the things that I've, I've noticed occasionally is that I end up with um, two different measurements. So uh, this time I haven't. It's 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 pretty pretty close to identical. But I've got to take it out. Where's my pencil? This is my waste side. This is the bit I've got to take out. So I've got to take all that out. Often you'll find that that measurement is a little bit different. So if it, it might be five and a half and not five. So it's very important that we do both the small pieces first, and then we'll do both of the second bits, uh, the big bits. Now, the taller bits, we don't want to come off the end when we cut through here. Okay, so I'm going to cut that with a Stanley knife there and here that will give me a sharp edge as you can see there's not a lot of material there and if I come tearing along here and then just flip off the end I'm going to lose that bit there and it will show up in the in the, the, re, the plinth itself and then when I've um, got the plinth um, assembled then I'll trim all that out with the chisel like I did before and probably Dave that would have been a really good way to use uh, the square cut chisel the corner chisel so I've got to get my cut here. So set my height according to my pencil mark. Tiny bit more. Now remember the pencil mark is on the outside. Of the box so we go to the pencil mark rather than to the middle of the pencil mark so we go to the edge of the pencil mark now maybe I'll have to change my fence we've actually run out of time so my setup has taken me a little longer than I that I wanted to do so um, what I'll do is I'll do a, a midweek setup and, and cut of the, um, the plinth. Um, so you'll get that during the week and I will uh, uh, fit it all next week um, so that um, you get to see how, how it all goes together. So we'll stop there and we'll, we'll carry on next week. Um, much as I'd like to carry on, um, Dave's just about to start his show. Now I think he's, um, he's still working on his table. Um, when I saw the table, it's, it's actually quite a nice looking table and I like the design of his legs. So yeah, click over to Dave and uh, we'll catch you all next week. Now, if you like what you've seen and you haven't been on the show before, um, subscribe to our channel and ring the bell and we'll give you a reminder every Sunday and let you know that we are actually beginning a show and you can catch up on the rest of the build. So. We'll stop there, and I was just getting excited with that trenching too. So, anyhow, we'll it'll get there, and um, 
if you subscribe, you can actually join the chat. So join in with all of these guys that are actually having a little bit of a, something to say and, and asking questions and so forth. So have a good week, everybody, and I will see you all next Sunday. Thank you.